Today, we're going to be talking about the murder of Yun Mi Hoi by her daughter Isabella Guzman. On August 27, 2013, Isabella Guzman got in a fight with her mom, and it ended with her spitting in her mother's face. Yun Mi was used to her daughter's bad behavior, but this crossed a line that she had never crossed before. She was born in Aurora, Colorado and grew up as an only child. Isabella is said to have been difficult on her parents even from a very young age. She had a lot of behaviors that made her very difficult to parent. Her behavior was so bad that when she was seven years old, her mom sent her to live with her dad. Isabel's parents got divorced when she was only three years old. When your parents split it's going to affect you in some way. Whatever these behaviors were, they were unfortunately bad enough that her mom felt like she needed to live full-time with her father, at least for a little while. There were several times where police were called to her house because neighbors thought they saw someone breaking and entering into their home, turns out it was just Isabel's boyfriend. She lived with her dad for a little while and then eventually she moved back in with her mom and her stepdad when she was 14. The problems with Isabella did not stop there. Unfortunately, they just got worse. By August of 2013 when Isabella turned 18, things were so bad that her mom and stepdad had just pretty much reached their breaking point with her. Isabel's stepfather, Ryan Hoy said that she became even more threatening and disrespectful towards her mother than ever before. Yun Mi was becoming scared of her own daughter, and that of course broke her heart because she loved her daughter, and she wanted their relationship to improve. She wanted things to get better, but she just couldn't get through to her. On August 28, the day after her daughter spit in her face, she opens an email from her daughter, and it says you will pay. Even though this email was addressed to someone named Cecilia. Yun Mi was obviously scared that this was a threat to her with everything that had happened with Isabella recently, and the way that she saw things escalating. She decided for her own safety she needed to contact the police so she did, and she hoped that the police would be able to talk to her daughter and maybe get things to a better place. Now that Isabella was 18, her mom had every right to kick her out of the house and she didn't want to have to do that. She wanted her daughter to know that if she continued on acting the way she was that there would be consequences for her actions, and that's basically what the police told Isabella as well. The police told her, if you don't start acting right your mother has every right to kick you out of the house, but they weren't sure if the message was getting through. Isabella was very quiet and didn't react much to the police talking to her so Yun decided to contact her father, Robert. She knew that the two of them always had a better relationship and she thought that maybe Robert could talk to her and hopefully things would get better after that. So, he tried talking to her, and according to him, he thought the conversation went pretty well. They sat in the backyard, and they talked about respect and how people should treat their parents. He truly thought he got through to her, but the truth is by that point there just was no getting through to her. Hours later things took a horrible turn for the worst. That night around 9.30 p.m., Yun Mi came home from work, and she brought back McDonald's for her and her husband Ryan. She and Ryan talked for a little bit and at one point she asked him if he knew where Isabella was. Ryan said he didn't. Yun Mi was so nervous coming home not knowing what Isabella was going to be like, knowing just hours earlier she had called the police on her own daughter. A daughter that she loved and she hated fighting with. Ryan said that he didn't know where she was and that he hadn't seen her for the last hour. Yun Mi tells Ryan she's going to go upstairs and take a quick shower but within minutes she was fighting for her life not long after she went upstairs. Ryan heard what he described as a series of thumping sounds coming from the bathroom followed by a blood-curdling scream. Ryan said that at first, he thought that Isabella was fighting her mom using her fists, so he went upstairs to try and stop it but unfortunately, 
he was just too late. When he first got upstairs, the door to the bathroom was slightly open and then Isabella pushed herself up against the door and locked it. Ryan wasn't able to get in. Ryan was just helpless while he's hearing the thumping sounds continuing from the other side of the bathroom door. At that point, blood starts to come out from underneath the door, and that really freaks him out. Ryan ran back downstairs and got his phone to call 911. While he was on the phone, he's frantically telling dispatch what's happening and the fact that he's seeing blood come out from underneath the bathroom door. Ryan also explained that this was not their first call to the police that day. He told 911 that the police had come by the house earlier and talked to Isabella. Then he runs back upstairs hoping that he's somehow able to open the door and save his wife. That's when he hears his wife's last word which was Jehovah. To his surprise Isabella just opens the door, and she just casually walked out of the bathroom with a blank stare on her face holding a bloody knife. Ryan then looks down and sees his wife lying on the floor. The dispatcher instructs him to start trying CPR but even he knew that there was just no hope for his wife. Her injuries were so bad, he knew his wife was dead, and Isabella was gone. Expression on her face. I'm not sure what happened with the knife she was carrying. It looked like she was still holding on to it. And I looked down and I saw my wife on the floor, blood everywhere all over the bathroom. I was talking to the dispatcher, and the dispatcher told me, make sure you get her breathing again, get her okay. airways open. I don't know CPR. So, I, But at, at that time, I looked at my wife's eyes, and I knew that uh, she must not have made it. I just couldn't, couldn't believe that, that it had happened like that. Isabella was in a rage like I've never seen before. What do you mean? Well, she... I could just hear her just pummeling my wife. I thought she was just hitting her with her fists. Okay. So that thumping sound you were Thumping hearing. sound, I thought, was you mean maybe hitting against the wall okay. and Isabella just pounding her with her fists. Okay. So that's what I originally thought it was, and that's when I called. EMS arrived at the scene at approximately 10.16 p.m., only 11 minutes after the initial 911 call was made and by 10.28 p.m. Yunmi was officially pronounced dead. This scene was absolutely brutal, she had been stabbed 79 times, 31 times to the face, 48 times to her neck and torso, and likely several blows from a baseball bat as well, which officers found lying next to her body. There was no sign of Isabella there in the house, so police wasted no time starting their search for her. With breaking news in Aurora this morning, police are now looking for this woman. They're calling her a suspect in a deadly stabbing overnight. A woman was found dead in a home on South Lima Street. This is near Parker in Havana. Eric Lufer is live with the details on the investigation. Eric, what's taking place right now? Dale, when we first got here just after 10 o'clock last night, we talked with police. They said they were waiting on a search warrant before they could go inside. When I got here at 4 o'clock this morning, I did see a few officers uh, coming in and out. So it looks like the investigation has started. I'm going to step out real quickly for you, show you what's happening here. This is the house in question. This white house here, you can see the yellow tape blocking off. And they've also got the road blocked off as well. And you can see several squad cars still in the road here. Let's give, a, uh, give you another look at this suspect. Isabella Guzman, 18 years old. This is the woman police are looking for. They were searching for her everywhere last night. They even used the help of a, the Denver police chopper last night. They did a reverse 911 to homes within a one and a half mile radius searching for this woman. Here's what we know so far. Just after 10 o'clock, police got a call on what was supposed to be just a family disturbance. That's what police thought. And they were caught off guard when they arrived. They said a man greeted them at the door and told them that there was a woman upstairs with apparent stab wounds. Police pronounced the woman dead on scene, and then the search was on for Isabella Guzman. Again, she is still on the loose. Police looking for her as we speak. She is named a suspect right now in this case. And, of course, the investigation is still ongoing, still very active here. And, of course, we're going to cover this from start to finish throughout the morning, and I'll be here for it. The police immediately put out a be on the lookout, and they told the public that she was armed and dangerous 
and of course they attempted to track her cell phone, but unfortunately, she had turned it off. It was clear that this manhunt was going to continue through the night. Eventually they did find her, but it took 16 hours. They ended up finding her in an Aurora parking garage the next day on August 29th around 2 p.m. where she was arrested on suspicion of first-degree murder. What's crazy is they actually found her because someone had called in saying they saw a dead body in the back of a jeep, and it was actually Isabella sleeping. She was covered in her mother's blood when they got there, though she wasn't in the jeep anymore she was actually just outside the parking garage. They also found the knife and a backpack full of her personal belongings just sitting outside the car. When she was captured, she was still wearing the same outfit that she murdered her mom in, a pink sports bra with turquoise shorts. They also found a few other clothing items of hers inside of the H Mart bathroom which surveillance footage captured Isabella going into after fleeing the scene of the murder. While she was in this H Mart, she had interacted with people who were there shopping, and she was covered in blood and none of them called 911. She later said that she had told them all that she had been raped and didn't want to get the police involved. These people just listened to her, but even though her capture and arrest went smoothly, the next several hours of interrogation did not. On August 29th the same day as her arrest Isabella spent hours in interrogation and it went as badly as it possibly could. The thing is Isabella Guzman has schizophrenia, but she didn't know that, and the police didn't know that, so while she's sitting in the interrogation room, she fully believes that she is a 15-year-old girl named Samantha Gonzalez and the investigators are sitting in that same room fully believing that she is intentionally lying to them. And of course we know she isn't telling the truth, but you have to keep in mind she is experiencing complete delusion, and in her mind she really thinks she is. Samantha Gonzalez Now I'm sure many of you think that she is fully aware of what she did at this point, and that she is just outright being deceptive and isn't experiencing delusion. The interrogation footage which has been reviewed by professionals, and it's their belief that this is a delusion. However, it does not excuse her of what she did by any means because what she did is absolutely despicable. Knowing that information will help you make sense of the footage. Left her to die, brutally, on a bathroom I floor. did not murder anyone. Please stop feel? accusing just, me uh, of just this. Just tell me how that feels. Please fingerprint me, please fingerprint me, please fingerprint me. I will show you that I am not this freaky, horrible person. So she's 110 pounds, that's really skinny. I'm 148 pounds. Isabella, please. Don't call me Isabella. That's really That's your name. Me. My name is not Isabella. My name is Samantha. There are people in this world who look alike, you know? Mm -hmm. You guys are not, like, all-knowing. You don't know everything. You're just accusing me of all this stuff that I didn't do. We know what you, we, we know what you did, and we know who you are. We know how it Apparently happened. Apparently not, because you guys are completely wrong. You got the wrong girl. No, we don't. We don't have the wrong girl, and you know that. No, I don't. How did it feel? How did what feel? When you did what you did, how did it feel? I Make didn't feel kill good? anybody. Did That's it disgusting. Did it feel good? It's disgusting. You guys really think I'm a murderer? Yeah, we're not joking. Did it make you feel powerful? Yeah. Just you can hear in their voices that the investigators are absolutely not buying her story and that there is a lot of tension and frustration in this room. Isabella keeps repeating that all they need to do is fingerprint her and then they will know the truth, but the truth is that she is Isabella, and she did just murder her mother. At this point investigators have no idea that she's schizophrenic, and they just continue to berate her, and they're hoping that she'll just finally come clean, but it's entirely ineffective. I'm not this girl. I don't know what happened with her and her life and who she is or what school she went to, but that's not my problem. My problem right now is finding my boyfriend. It's a funny game you're playing, but nobody's laughing. Do you think you think some juror sitting on a jury is going to believe that you're not the person we suspect killed their mother I'm when you're caught right down the street yeah. with knife injuries to your hand? Scissors. It's not scissor injuries. I told you they were scissors. It's not scissor injuries. Yes, it was. You're not going to bully me into admitting what you want me to like. 
pretend no, to be I, I suspect we're probably not. I mean, that's a decision you have to make in your own head. I mean, that's the bottom line. You're 18 years of age. You understand why you're here. You know what you've done. We've given you an opportunity to talk about what you've done. We've given you an opportunity to give us a reason why you did what you did. And you've continued on this crazy-ass story that, that this you have nothing to do with this, and that story is not believable. We don't it doesn't believe have it. to be believable. It well, would be true. The story that investigators are referencing here is Isabella's delusion that she is a 15-year-old girl from Ohio named Samantha Gonzalez, who has run away from home because of her mother's abuse, and that all she wants to do is meet up with her boyfriend, and that this is just a crazy case of mistaken identity. To the investigators this is just a story, a bad series of lies, but to Isabella this is reality. Her delusion is so real that she doesn't even recognize photos of herself. I am not this Isabella girl. All this crazy fucking shit keeps happening and I am not this girl. Crazy fucking shit, that's a good way to put it. How would you feel if this was done to you? I'd be scared. If I were you. I'm not really scared, I'm just a little freaked out. So you're not scared this by this? No, because the DNA will not match. Do you have no remorse for what you did? I did not do anything wrong. So you don't, do you? I am not. You can, just sit, you can just sit there and continue to deny this with a clear conscience? I am not, Isabella. Really? You can just sit here and, and completely deny all of this? I'm not denying anything. I am being truthful. That's you. No, it there's is no, not. There's no question. That's you. <clears throat> She's pretty. Yeah, you're a pretty girl. That's you. That's not me. Yeah, that's up your Facebook account. Through the entire interrogation, she denies stabbing her mother. She denies being Isabella, and she denies that her father who was brought into the station to identify her is actually her father. Who's that? That's my baby. Okay. Sir, do you recognize, do you recognize this? Yes, sure. Come on back out here, please. Do you recognize her? Yes, yeah, she's my daughter. What's her, what's her name? Isabella. Isabella, what's your last name? Guzman. Isabella Guzman. Okay. Uh, right. This photograph here, is that photograph, is that your daughter there? Yeah. Okay. And this is your daughter here? Yeah. So her interrogation ends with her being placed in handcuffs and taken to the Arapo County Jail. Here she awaited being formally charged. And in the meantime, like we saw earlier, her stepfather is brought in for questioning. To try to make sense of the violence that had happened the night before, he explained a little bit about their family history and how Isabella was sent to live with her father at an early age because of her behavior. And how things in the home had gotten especially bad in the days leading up to the murder. Ryan said that he just had no idea that Isabella was capable of doing something like this. We were in the house again. Any? Together. No, no problems. No problems. No, any conversation? Any? Not much of a conversation at all. We didn't Did she give you any much. indications that she might be plotting to do something like this? Oh, no. I knew she was mad at her mom. Mm -hmm. and I knew she was very, very upset at her mom, but I had, I had no idea she would ever do anything like this. Ryan told investigators about that email that Isabella had sent to her mother saying you will pay and how Yunni was very afraid of her daughter at this point. But my wife was just on pins and needles because of all that had happened around Isabella the last couple of days. Okay. So has it seemed like things have gotten worse in the last few days between Isabella and her mom? With what you me told me, yes. What she told me, yes. And that's what she worse. told you was the, the, the statement she had made? The cursing at her and uh, spitting in her face. Okay. And uh, the email she wrote to my wife, that ended up in my wife's hands, said something about you will pay or you've been cursed. Okay. And your wife found that email today? Today at about, uh, I remember she showed it to me. Uh, it came in, I think, about 2.42, something like that. Okay. Before the officers showed up. And it was from Isabella? From Isabella. But she marked it to a Cecilia. It was kind of funny. She sent it to my wife, 
but she made it out to uh, Cecilia. This email was addressed to Cecilia, and we just heard Ryan again say the name Cecilia. So who is Cecilia? It turns out that the reason Isabella killed her mom, or the reason she says she killed her mom, was because she thought she was actually a woman named Cecilia, and then in order to save the world, Cecilia needed to die. All of this was part of her delusion, and delusion or not she was responsible for Yunmi murder. On August 30th, a judge ordered Isabella to remain in the Arabo County Jail without bond on charges of first-degree murder. That afternoon, after refusing to leave her jail cell, and basically being dragged into the courtroom, Isabella could be seen making these bizarre faces at the camera, and at one point even staring deeply into a camera and making a pointing gesture towards each of her eyes. It was all of this that just so happened to be caught on camera that made this case go pretty viral. In the Seven News, formal murder charges and crime of violence against this woman, Isabella Guzman. She's accused of stabbing her mother 79 times. Seven News reporter Lance Hernandez is live now. Lance, the filing of charges was actually delayed today because Guzman wouldn't leave her cell. Mike, she was due in court this morning, but court officials told us she didn't want to leave her jail cell at the Arapahoe County Detention Center. Isabella Guzman now facing first-degree murder charges. She was uh, charged with first-degree murder after stabbing her mom about 79 times in the face and neck at this house in Aurora. The 18-year-old smirked at the camera as she stood up and walked to the defense table this afternoon, her arms and legs shackled. After the judge read the complaint against her, she looked over, stared at the camera, and motioned to the area under each of her eyes with her index finger. In 2020, right around the time that TikTok started to really get popular, the footage was posted and went absolutely viral. Comments started to flood in talking about how pretty she is, with the song, Sweet, but a psycho, playing in the background. People were praising her for her beauty and completely overlooking and making light of the fact that she killed her mom, and the comments that people were leaving were just disgusting things like, well what can I say, well done I've fallen in love with her, I would fix her, she killed her own mother, but she is kind of cute. That's just a few of the comments. The charges were formerly brought against her. Isabella sat in jail without bond until June of 2014 and it was only then that the truth about her schizophrenia was revealed to the public. During this hearing Isabella entered a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity, and she was backed up by a doctor who testified to her condition. This doctor testified that in the weeks and months leading up to the murder, Isabella began experiencing delusions, and illusions that she just could not control. They explained that Isabella truly believed that her mother there was a woman named Cecilia and that in order to save the world she had to kill her, and that wasn't her only delusion. Her boyfriend, who was really an ex-boyfriend by the time the murder happened, explained that she also was saying things to him that just didn't make sense and with what they learned about her having schizophrenia, it seemed possible that she was experiencing a different reality with him as well. Ultimately it was clear to everyone, including the district attorney, that Isabella was not well and that she hadn't been well mentally speaking at the time of the murder. Her plea of not guilty by reason of insanity went uncontested. This afternoon a state doctor told the court that Guzman, pardon me, uh, suffers from paranoid schizophrenia, that she hallucinates, stares into space and has conversations with people who aren't there. The district attorney says he asked the court to find her not guilty by reason of insanity to avoid a trial. As these state doctors determine that she's no longer a risk, a threat to herself or to the community, it could be a year, two years, it could be the remainder of her life. Now, George Brockler told me that it won't be an easy process. He says it wasn't an easy decision. He says down the road, once she's treated at the hospital in Pueblo, she'll have to come back to court so that the judge can see the process that she's making. And again, he said it's for an indeterminate period of time. It could be for the rest of her life. It could be a year or two before she's back out in public. At that time, the judge since sentenced Isabella Guzman to an indefinite stay at the Colorado Mental Health Institute in Pueblo, Colorado and her release would be granted if, 
and when she was deemed no longer a threat to herself or society and to the surprise of many after only seven years Isabella began her petition for release. November of 2020, Isabella spoke out for the first time about what happened and what she said about what happened and why it happened might shock you in the interview where she first spoke out, Isabel shared that she was the victim of abuse growing up she said that her parents who raised her as a Jehovah's Witness abused her and that the abuse only worsened when she turned 14. She decided to walk away from the religion. She went on to say how hard her mother's murder had been on her and that she was also injured that day and has scars on her hands to prove it. And basically, what Isabella wanted people to know by giving this interview is that she wasn't herself when she did that and that she's since been restored to full health. I was not myself when I did that, and I have since been restored to full health. I was abused at home by my family for many years. My parents are Jehovah's Witnesses, and um, I left the religion when I was 14, and the abuse at home worsened after I quit. The fight with my mom was terrible, and um, I was injured in the process. I have the scars on my hands. Um, I don't know if you can see or not. I'm not mentally ill anymore. I'm not a danger to myself or others. If I could change it, or if I could take it back, I would. I am sure there are many mixed feelings about this case, and I really want to hear your opinions. Does this look like someone who's truly sorry for brutally murdering their mother? Do you think that in seven years she's been rehabilitated? Is she ready to rejoin society, and do you think that she's remorseful for what she did? Isabella remained and still remains to this day in an institution despite her petitions for freedom as of 2021. Isabella has been granted permission to leave the institution for group and individual therapy, but her activity will be monitored with a GPS tracking device. While Isabella may be able to manage her schizophrenia now, should that make her a candidate for release? Do you feel that she's done the time and should be released? Thanks for listening to this episode. We'll be back next time of course to bring you yet another case but until then stay safe out there and please subscribe.